All right. My name is Greg Vale, and today I'm here to talk to you about how to build a rocket mass heater. Now, what I've done is a little bit different than what some of the other people do. A lot of people just build the bricks and use for a fire chamber. What I've done over here in this situation, you know, as an example, is that normally in a rocket mass heater, you put your wood in here and the fire burns horizontally. And if I move these bricks, you can see I have a metal tube in here running horizontally and then elbowing up. So what will happen here is that we'll start a fire right down in here. We'll put our wood in this way. The fire will burn this way. And then as the fire burns, the wood slowly moves its way down into it. What I've done here is I have a six inch pipe coming out. I've then overlapped it evenly with an eight inch pipe. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take clay that I have here dried out because it's easier to mix with sand dried out. And I'm gonna mix the clay with sand and I'm gonna fill this in between this tube right here so that the outer tube can get really hot and the inner tube can get really hot. And actually I need to put another little piece to have this come maybe just a couple inches lower here and then I'll fill all that. What happens then in, and I'll show this here a little later after I get this cut, is I have a hole here made to go over the top of this tube here. And I have another hole here that is made for this to go up underneath. So when this is cut out, I will flip this can over and I will set this on top of this this whole apparatus. So my firewood will go in here, my fire will burn horizontally, my smoke will come up and, and this will all get really hot, this will get really hot, and as the smoke comes up, this top will be about an inch and a half to two inches below the lid of the can. So the smoke will come up into this little area and it will circle around and it comes down the sides and it keeps getting burnt by the outside of the can and by the inside of the pipe. Now as the smoke keeps getting burnt, obviously it makes it more efficient. These things get up to be up to about 700 degrees and at that point the smoke will then come down and will go through from the bottom of the can and it will exhaust out and I will then build a chimney stack up and run it out of the window. Later on I'll show some of that. In the future, I plan on doing what some other people have done and kind of run some pipe back and forth and build a cob around it, make a couch out of it. After I get the tube on and I get the barrel on, I'll show you guys how that works. And then I'll talk later in some other videos on how you build cob and how you can pack it around the bricks. The whole idea of this system is that this is going to get so hot, but at the same time, if there's nothing packed in around it, it's going to cool off really quick. So it doesn't take very much wood to burn, but you want to find a way to utilize or store all that heat once you've created it. And that's where the cob comes in. It packs in and then the whole thing gets really hot. It'll stay hot for all day long. What happened is you put the wood right in this way, right? You actually stick some paper down here and shit and you light it on fire and you stick your wood down in here and then and the fire actually burns this way, right? And then the smoke starts coming up this tube, which I've got filled with clay and volcanic rock, right? I've got an eight inch tube and a six inch tube. And then what happens is the smoke comes up here, right? Up this tube. Then this barrel, which you can see I got a hole cut out. The hole is made to go over the top of this and around that, right? But everywhere else is sealed. I put this over the top of the whole thing, and there's a gap between this and the lid, right? So the smoke comes up here. This thing gets really hot, right? Fire gets really hot. This thing gets really hot. So then it starts making the barrel really hot. The smoke comes up here, and what it does is it gets recooked. Right? There's a whole bunch of things like wood gas and other kind of elements that are in that smoke. And so it sits here and it recooks the smoke. And that thing will get up to about 700 degrees. And so then what I do is I'll be packing this thing completely with cob. I mean, i got a lot more to go. I'll probably bring the cob almost all the way out to here. 
you know, really thick. And then a lot of people, what they do is they essentially run the tubes down that way, and then they run them out that way, and then and then exhaust them out, and they build like a cob couch. Yeah, it's cool. Over the tubes, <laughs> and then they like <laughs> put blankets and shit on them and sleep so on what the is, fucking what is couch. down here going to be like you guys chill out there? Maybe. Yeah, but really, this will what is going to happen is I got this got shut up. I got this set up so that the cold air return from upstairs is right there, so there's already a hole in the floor. So I'm just going to put a hole in here, and I can put my wood from upstairs, and I can just drop it straight in, right? The barrel will be right here. <laughs> the barrel will be right here, and I'm going to build that cob all the way up around that barrel, right? And then at the top of the barrel, huh? I'm going to kind of leave it open, but I'm going to build the sides up a ways about this much up the barrel, leaving this big Ew. gap above it for heat, right, to go. And it'll come all the way up here, and I'll take this off, and I'll shoot a tube coming out of my cob right into here. And this is the cold air return. This is where the furnace sucks air into to blow it through the house after it gets heated by the furnace. Well, I'm going to suck hot air into it and shoot it through the house with ever without having to heat the furnace. Yeah, that's what this is going to do. It's going to suck all the heat from this thing up into the furnace. Through the no, I mean like the upstairs, upstairs. Oh, all the way upstairs? Well, it does, yeah, it's a different furnace. Yeah, it wouldn't change a whole lot. It won't suck it up through there. But this thing will get hot He's enough. Back. Everything's mm -hmm. going to go gravity from here. So it's like, uh, the problem we got upstairs right now is that we have a wood burner, but you've yeah. got to get the room at like 80 degrees to be comfortable as far as like setting a temperature thing because the basement's so cold, the furnace isn't yeah. running, so and so then the floor here is cold. Right? Your feet are always cold, but it's warm. And you'll notice then when the furnace is running, the furnace what? warms the basement up some, and upstairs you'll be comfortable. Okay, I'll go look at the thermostat thing, and it'll say like oh, it's seven. Fine. Yeah, I got some time. And I'll be like, well, oh, I still feel all right, and it's 70 right. in here, where when I'm running the wood burner, it gets down to 70, and the furnace isn't on, I'm getting cold. Right? Yeah. And so this will take care of a lot of that. Same time that we've been running a wood burner, not the furnace. So my water heater over here, is electric, it hurts. which means the water gets hot, the but then this the cold bell. air down in the Close basement the cools the water off real quick. Yeah. And my water heater has to heat again and again and again in the wintertime when we're off. This thing here will spread enough heat around here that it won't have a problem. Plus, if I build a couch, what I'll do is I'll run some of this blue hex tubing through it right here. This is this literally right here is my hot water. Line. This goes right to the hot, this is cold water going to the hot water line, right? So if I take a tube and I run a few of these back and forth through that couch, the tube and then the cold water will go through that couch and it will get heated up before it comes we'll up. We'll show you a video of here. some other couches. You you have to see it. I've seen some other videos. Yeah, by the time this is all done, I'm going up, packed around, okay. and then see how it see how it's kind of lumpy and all that other stuff right now. Well, that's because it's got a lot of like it's got a lot of hay in it and stuff, and so it's really hard to to get it you know completely smoothed out. I'd have to get it really soft and wet. So what I'll do is get it all built up with cob, and then when it's all done, because I want it to look like Hobbitville, when it's all done, then I'll just <laughs> take clay. And I'll get clay really wet, and that way, you know, clay comes out really, really smooth. And then you can paint it and cook it in a kiln. I don't need to cook it in a kiln. This thing is a kiln. It will cook it right where it sits, you know. Nice. And then you can put gloss over it. There's people, they got, they've got houses made out of this stuff that have been around for 500 years. Imagine that. There's a guy in one of the videos. She's got the guy's got a he's got a whole wall. Oh his, whole, his whole wall is built with a cob. And oh, his, you should see that and, video. And his, That's cool. And his barrel and stuff like that that is in the wall. So on inside one side the of the wall. wall you can see the barrel, on the other side of the wall you can see the barrel. On the one side of the wall he feeds his fire in, right? And, and the, the other side is where he does his cooking. And the other side of the wall is like where they got their couch and all that kind of stuff. Oh, it's cool. And so it literally heats up the whole wall. You know, and keeps so it heats both rooms, you know what I mean, really quick that way. Let me see, from the last time I talked to you guys, I talked a little bit about how I was going to extend this pipe, and I was going to fill this up with a combination mixture of clay and vermiculite. The idea of the clay and the vermiculite, obviously clay can get really hot, you know, people put it in a kiln and, and it hardens really well. Vermiculite's volcanic rock, you know, I'm broke up into little pieces, 
and uh, you know it holds, takes on heat, holds heat, and retains heat very well. And that's what we want. We want this pipe to get very, very hot. This is where we're going to burn. Our smoke's going to come up out of here. Um, as you can see, I kind of packed the bricks in with a mixture of cob. And after I get done explaining just a little bit more, then I'm going to talk about you know how you make cob. So I'm I'm set pretty much here and ready. I got a barrel. As you can see in my barrel, the bottom side of it is actually the top of the barrel, and it has the holes. I do have the caps to put into that one. As you can see on the bottom of the barrel, I've cut a hole in it. Now you have a choice here. I mean, this is where the central exhaust tube is going to feed the smoke out into the barrel. Over here is the area where it's going to turn around and go into the actual chimney pipe to leave. Now this barrel, grab this the right way. This barrel is a little noisy. But this barrel goes right on top of all that. So you can see the middle chimney pipe is coming up here. Now they Normally are recommended about an inch and a half to two inches of clearance between the top of that pipe and the top of the lid of your can. Right now mine is a little bit more than what it should be. It's about three inches and I'm going to kind of try that and test that and see how it works and if I don't like that I have a, a ring I can take the barrel off I put in and make my pipe a little closer to the lid. And they say you know the farther away you get or the closer you get changes the rate of how fast you know this will all get hot and so obviously one way it'll get hotter faster but won't get as hot altogether the other way it'll get hotter but it'll just take a little longer to get there so it kind of depends on what you're after and you can adjust from there at this point after I've got this barrel on here we really want to make sure that that bottom is all sealed and of course this isn't going to be very efficient because it'll get really hot but once your fire's done burning, you can see that if all you had was a metal barrel, the heat's going to dissipate pretty quick. And that's where all the cob comes in. The cob will heat up, and it will stay really hot. So you can see I've got cob built up around here. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to end up building cob all the way around here, kind of in a circle form around the barrel. And then I'm going to start bringing it up around the barrel. Now at first, I'm going to build just enough to kind of come up over the lip so that I can you know, make sure it's sealed at the bottom, but I still want to test it, and I might need to take the barrel off and put it back on to get my the height or whatever, the distance that I like. I also pay a lot of attention to the areas that are, you know, seams where I put the pipes together. I'll be cogging all around those to make sure that they seal up really well, and uh, and then we will test our, our, our mass rocket here. Now, I want to talk a little bit then about cob. Um, cob is a mixture that, um, to me, is somewhat created in the same way as concrete. If you know anything about concrete, then you realize, you know, you, you have Portland and a sand mixture. They throw a synthetic fiber in there, they add water, mix it all up, and when you let it dry, you know, it's, it's concrete. This is kind of the same way here. I have, I have clay. I'm using, instead of Portland, I have sand. But you know, both clay and sand are pretty easy to get anywhere. And then my fiber is an all-natural fiber of straw. Now this particular straw I got from uh, cottontail plants. I cut down a bunch of cottontail plants and chopped them up into little pieces, about two, three inches. Difference between hay and straw is straw is hollow, hay is not, hay is for horses. And so I mix this together. I pretty much put about I'd say about four scoops of clay to about three scoops of sand, and then I just kind of throw in a little handful of straw, some water, mix it all up, turn it into cob. Um, one day, if they ever legalize marijuana, we will have a all-natural fiber that's even better than the synthetic one. But as you can see, you can get an idea. That's how you make a mixture of cob. We're very, very simple, and then you just kind of come around and throw it onto your furnace or fireplace, pack it down and around. You can see the straw in the clay in different spots you can see mine's still got you know some drying going on here it's not totally solid yet and of course this is going to dry out and solidify and when it gets hot it will you know it will solidify even more 
and that's how we make cobs. So next time I come around, I'll have a little bit more done, and I'll have the base, and I'll rot it up some, and we'll try to fire it up and put some temperature on the top and see what it does and, and go from there.